in this video, I want to talk about analytics, using analytics to predict the future, and especially in the really exciting area of sailing and sailboat racing. I'm here with Lahini. You work for Oracle and you are a data athlete um, that helps the, the, the GP sailing race. They use these really cool F-50 catamaran sailing boats to do races all over the world and you help them extract data, make predictions, help them to extract really cool insights. So maybe you can Explain a little bit more about the, the sailing race and, and what this is. Yes, so SailGP is an annual global sailing event that was founded in 2018. So there are rival national teams that battle it out in these F-50 catamarans. Um, each Grand Prix consists of two competition days, there's five fleet races, and as the points accumulate throughout the season, it all ends up leading to the top two teams battling it out for this million dollar prize with a trophy and that glory of winning the Cell GP season. Amazing. So I, I see lots of parallel with, parallels with Formula One racing and car racing. Mm -hmm. this is, I, I've written about this quite a lot in, in, in my books and, and blogs and some of the parallels again from there to, to businesses using real-time data. Um, what sort of data do, do you collect then how do you stream this data? I think there are sensors on the boat. Maybe you can go into this a little bit more in a bit more detail, explaining what what data you're collecting and how you how you're using that data. Yeah, of course. So there's 1,200 data points on each boat. So if you times that by six, that's pretty. That's a lot of data yeah. coming. Um, so th that's then taken. And this is streamed live. Yep, all real time data. So it's taken to your first to a local Oracle database, but then we use what's called Golden Gate to then replicate that data at really high volumes of data um, to our cloud instance. Um, and then from there, we can spread that out on a global scale um, to us, to the fans, to the CellGP app, CellGP website. So it's going everywhere at, in real time. Amazing. And then you're also pulling in external data, like wind and, and anything else? Yep. So we take also take the data from the markers that are along the course as well. So again, but all of that is going into our cloud. Today. Cool. And then I guess what's different between the, the GP sailing races and Formula One is that in Formula One, the teams guard their data very secretively and they try, this has to be, is, is their, their, their base for their competitive advantage. If I understand this correctly, mm -hmm. your data is openly made available to all the, the competitors and yeah, all the teams. Exactly. So all th if one team finds out something brand new, um, that's you know really useful information to that team, they do have to share it with the rest of the teams. But also each of the F50 designs, they're all identical. So the, the focus for all the teams is purely about the performance of the race that they can perform, but also the data that they've got to, Fascinating. to exceed in a race. So you're sharing this data and you are now able to predict um, possible winners. And I, I, I think we, we were talking about earlier that, that, that this has become so accurate that you almost don't want to share this with fans because it would make it pretty boring that you c you're pretty sure who will win the race, is that right? Yeah, so uh, as a team uh, we've got our analytics experts and we've worked with them to understand uh, what, sort, what we can understand from the data. Um, like you said, we, there were some really, really accurate predictions but again it does take that human element out of it. But something that was produced um, by one of our experts was the ghost boat, which is to predict the optimal course um, okay. to win a race, which of yeah. course all the sailing teams are very interested to find out about. Very good. And, and how close was the ghost boat mm. prediction to the, the, the real winner? It, it was very close. Um, the, so if you look at the actual route for what, set, what Australia took to win the season, um, it was very accurate. But there was actually one thing that we did notice, um, which the sailors actually pointed out to us. And this was where you could see um, there's a tacking and jibing pattern. So it's like a zigzag pattern towards the beginning. Yeah. But if you apply that realistically, um, and if an F-50 did that on water, then the boat would actually tip very quickly right. just because it wouldn't do that realistically. It would need more straight line sailing to do that. So then we then reapplied some of our learnings and um, came up with version two, which was a, a lot more of a realistic version. Very good. So it's, this is nice that this interaction between humans and the data Excellent. Um, the, the other area that you're using it for is now fan engagement and, and social media and yeah. also analyzing social media traffic. Uh, do, you, do you want to share some of those insights? Yeah, of course. So we've, uh, one, again, uh, one of our Adetha athletes on the team, he's created this uh, Twitter 
dashboard, if you like. Um, so we've used Twitter APIs to then pull in some data to understand how the fans are interacting with the sport and see whether if it's popular or not. Um, so this includes things like uh, understanding how many tweets are coming in per hour. You could see what's the most uh, popular hashtag that's being used. And also, you've got what's called Twitter influencers. So if anyone who's quite popular or well known within a sport and makes a tweet about CellGP, that can then influence a lot of other people, their followers, to retweet or talk more about CellGP. So it's spreading that. that message, yeah. The other feature I love is this talk to the bot feature, where you now use machine learning to automate some of the, the discussions or the interactions that fans can have with your social media handle or with the board. How does that work? Yep, so uh, again, so we started off by, first it's just actually start off with a Q&A feature. So this is aimed for somebody who's brand new to sailing, who's never really interacted with sailing before. This is a great kind of start off to understand and learn about um, the Grand Prix. Mm. Um, but for version two, what, um, what one of our experts is doing is using voice recognition. So if, for example, the chatbot is on the boat, the sail one of the uh, Safe is GB, Team GB, and the USA have just passed you, you can then ask the chatbot to say, why has USA just passed me? And it will bring back you know, looking at all the different statistics coming through, it will bring back the right results and give you a suggestion that's of, okay, that you, you've maybe gone a bit too slow in this particular area. That's absolutely amazing. It's another parallel that, that I see. I, I've written about Wimbledon, for example, oh, how they yeah. use data and a very similarly automated fan engagement. Pretty, pretty impressive. The, the other area that I love is the, that you're not also bringing in video analytics. So you were you now have the ability to analyze branding on the mm -hmm. sales, logos. How does that work? Yeah, of course. So we are working with an, an, one of our analytics partners. They're called Iden TV, and they look at um, analyzing different types of footage. Um, and what they will do is they'll use classifiers to then identify where a logo has appeared um, in, in a footage of time. So we've then used our analytics. Um, again, we've created a different dashboard. So now this is a logo detection dashboard on our platform. And if you then drill down into a particular logo or a flag, you can then find out how many times that logo has appeared in a certain part of the footage, how big the logo has appeared. Um, and then the next steps, what we want to do is use machine learning to then be able to predict if, for example, you're a gold sponsor, you can identify where the optimal position to, put, to place a logo Very on a certain good. part of the boat because it might have um, the most amount of screen time. Amazing. So. Where, where do you see this going? What, what, what is on your, your wish list? Where would you like to take some of the analytics? I mean, so far, the, I mean, so far some of the things that, the, that as a team we've come up with are pretty amazing. Absolutely. So I think what would be really nice is set, you know, setting up a team in each of the locations, um, but not only using what we've got so far, but just evolving something even further or, or just finding out something new that can elevate it even further. So I think if we carried on with that, then that'd be really good. Great, and I, I see so many parallels with, with businesses, the, the ability to monitor your equipment in real time, the, the brand assessment, brand mm. awareness, the social media interaction. So fascinating, fascinating. Thank you, Lahini. No worries, thank, thank you. you.